Hey, Flip Geometry, how you doing? We're now at chapter nine, section two, and we're gonna start looking at surface areas of solids. Uh, the first ones up are prisms and cylinders. Let's take a look at those and uh, we'll get started right now. The surface area of a solid is the amount of skin that it has. That might be an easier way of, of thinking about it. Here's a solid, well, it's hollow, but my coffee cup. If I wanted to know how much paint would it take to paint this, I'd have to know how much area there is on all of the surfaces. That's what we're getting to. How much skin is there? How much outside is there? What would it take to cover this? Okay, so that's the concept. Surface area of a solid is the total number of square units needed to completely cover the figure. Last section we talked about nets. A net is all of the surface area of a solid laid out flat that you could fold back together to make the solid, right? Um, so if you look at the net of a cylinder or a prism, um, you will find that there, there's surface area of the sides of the lateral faces and there's surface area of the bases. Um, and, and so those are the shapes at the end that define what this solid looks like. We'll give you lots of examples here coming up, but the surface area of a, of a, of a lateral, uh, I'm sorry, the surface area is the lateral side plus two bases. The lateral side plus two bases. And a lateral side is the perimeter of a base times its height. Not really all that helpful terminology, but um, you'll see how this works in just a moment. So just to put this in a formal theorem, theorem 9.2.1 says that the lateral surface area of a right prism is the height of the prism times the perimeter of its base. So if you have a, a square prism that's got a square on the bottom and a square on the top, the perimeter of the square base times the height will give you the lateral surface area. And you can see that on the net, if you unwrap a, a square prism, you see that it's the, the perimeter of the square as represented by one part of the, the lateral surface and then the height is the other. So we'll see lots of examples of that coming forward. Let's look at this first example. Here we have a triangular prism. So you can see here the, the triangle forms the base and there's another triangle, a congruent triangle to it on the other base. And then the lateral surface area are three rectangles. And these three rectangles make up the lateral area. If you were to unfold this and make the net, you would find you have two congruent right triangles. Um, and then you have a, uh, a series of rectangles that you can consider as one large rectangle. Okay, So the perimeter of this triangle was given to you here 10 and 7 and 8. That's 18 and seven is 25, right? So the perimeter of the triangle winds up being one side of the rectangle. See how if you fold this together, you fold this up, you fold these two in, the perimeter of the triangle is this length of the rectangle. And then the height of the rectangle is just the height of the prism here, 20 centimeters. So the rectangle is 25 by 20, um, and that's, fairly easy math, right? Um, and then I have two triangles here that I need to get the base, which is 10, and the height, which they've given me is 5.6. One half times base height will give me the triangle. There are two of those. I just have to add it all together. So it's not hard math. If you can unwrap it in your brain, good for you. If you can't and you need to draw it out, that's fine. Um, but getting a net will make it much, much, much easier to do this. Okay, so let's, let's work this problem. The lateral area is 8 plus 10 plus 7, which is 25, times 20. So 25 times 20 is 500 square centimeters. That's all of these surfaces. Now I need to get the bases, right? The two triangles. The formula for a triangle is 1 half times base times height. The base is 10. The height is 5.6. 5 times 5.6 is going to be 28 square centimeters. So that's one of the triangles. But now notice I have two of those triangles. So 500 is the lateral surface area. The base is 28. The formula for surface area is the lateral area plus twice the base. 
So 500 plus 2 times 28 is 556 square centimeters. That's the surface area of this triangular prism. All right, you can go back and look at that again if you need more help. Just like a prism has two bases in the lateral surface, so does a cylinder. Matter of fact, a prism and a cylinder are, are um, the same object. It's just that the base is a different shape, right? So if I unwrap this cylinder, I'll, I'll have to cut down one side and then cut around the top and cut around the bottom and lay it all flat. It would look like this. Now, the, the lateral area here is still the perimeter of the base, but because it's a circle, we call it a circumference. It's the same thing, times the height. And so the circumference of the circle is the, the one dimension of the big rectangle. The height is the other. Find the area of that rectangle. Find the area of the circle. There's two of them. Add it all together. Not hard stuff. Theorem 9.2.2 is basically exactly the same as Theorem 9.2.1. The only difference is that you don't have a perimeter of a polygon, you have the circumference of a circle. But it's exactly the same concept, so don't get hung up on this, okay? The lateral area of a uh, cylinder is the product of its circumference and its height. And that just gives you the new value for L, but then it's still L plus 2B to get the surface area. So. Um, this is the same idea, just applied to round things instead of cornery things. So here's an example. I've got a cylinder, and the radius is 6 feet, and the height is 9 feet. That's all I need to know. Um, I can solve this. First, let's lay out uh, where we're going to go. So the lateral area is the circumference times the height. That's 2 pi r times the height. That's 2 times pi times 6, because that's the radius times the height, which is 9. So 12 times 9 is, is 104. I have to do 108. 108 times pi is going to give me my, uh, my lateral area. And then the base is pi r squared. So pi times 6 squared, 36 pi, is going to be the area of one circle. I have two of those. So I need to add them together. 108 pi plus twice 36 pi is going to give me 180 pi as my total answer. And if I wanted to resolve that to an approximate decimal value, that's 565-ish square feet. Okay? So uh, that's how you do a cylinder. It's exactly like how you do a prism. It's just round instead of a polygon. So this is a pretty cool derivation that will save you a little bit of work as you're calculating the surface area of a right circular prism or a cylinder. Um, the surface area is the lateral area plus twice the base. We just did that. The lateral area is the circumference times the height. And twice the base is 2 times pi r squared. Okay. If I, if I just change the way I'm grouping this, um, and I factor out an r, 2 pi r squared is the same as 2 pi times pi times r times r. If I group it this way, what's 2 pi r? 2 pi r is the circumference. So it's the same thing as the circumference times the radius. So circumference time the times the radius plus circumference times the height would be the same as circumference times the height plus the radius. So this is a little shorthand, and this may save you some time. Calculate the circumference, multiply that by the sum of the height and the radius, and you will get the total surface area. May be helpful to you. If that's confusing, don't sweat it. You can go back to the old formula and it'll work just fine. Two other derivations of this that don't show you the math, you just kind of have to believe them. Um, if you have a cube, so it's a square prism, but it's a special square prism where the height is also the same as the edge length of the base, so it's like a die, right? Um, then the formula is si surface area is equal to 6 times the edge squared because the edge squared is one of the bases and then if they're all 6 the same then it's just 6 times that. And for a regular prism um, of any kind of regular uh, polygon base, 1 half times AP is the uh, area of that base and then you have twice of those so that cancels out the 1 half times the height. So you can actually rearrange it to just be the perimeter times the height uh, plus the apophthegm. So again, if these are helpful to you, use them. You can always go back to the old formula and it'll work just fine. Alrighty, folks, that's what we've got. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments field below and I will address them as quickly as I can. Otherwise, I'll see you in class tomorrow. Until then, God bless you. Jesus loves you and so do I. Good night.